Okay, let's take a look at a fourth related array problem, but this time involving trigonometry. And we're going to use the same four steps that we used in the last uh, problems. So if you haven't done it yet, I'd watch the first uh, three related array videos first. And we'll use these same four steps, but with trig to solve it a little bit different way. So here we go. Okay, now this problem reads like this. Uh, a rocket is rising at the rate of 50 feet per second. You've got a radar site over here that's 100 feet from the launch pad following the rocket. And the angle of elevation of the radar is changing to follow the rocket. So find the rate of change in the angle of elevation of the rocket when the rocket is 150 feet high. Well, first of all, let's go ahead and label what we know and what we don't know. Now I'm going to go ahead and put uh, variables on this. So this is going to be x, so we'll let the horizontal distance be x, we'll let the vertical distance be y. And the problem wants to know the rate at which uh, the rocket is rising is 50 feet per second. Well that's the rate at which y is changing, so I know this. I know that the change in y with respect to time is 50 feet per second. So I know the rate at which y is changing. Now, x is a constant, and what the question is asking is the rate at which this angle is changing. So what the question wants to know is the rate of change of the angle. d theta dt, the rate at which the angle is changing, is equal to what? So this is what you know, and this is what you're looking for. Now, first of all, you've got to figure out which trig function do you use to solve this. Now, in this case, here's a right triangle. This is the opposite side. This is the adjacent side. So, since I know opposite and adjacent, I'm going to use the tangent. So, the tangent function will look like this. Uh, I've got the tangent of theta is equal to y over x. Now, in this problem, x is a constant at 100 feet throughout the whole problem. So I can go ahead and change that to the tangent of theta is equal to y over 100 feet. Now, just to make finding the derivative a little bit easier, I'm going to rewrite it like this. So the tangent of theta is equal to 1 over 100 feet times y. And the only reason for doing that is if I left it in this form, I have to use the quotient rule. If I take the y, scoot it over here, and now I've got a constant out in front, it makes it easier to find the derivative. So now that we've got the equation, let's go ahead and find the derivative. The derivative of the tangent is the secant squared but using the chain rule, don't forget to add a d theta dt. So the derivative of the outer part times the derivative of the inner part. Then that's going to be equal to uh, the constant 1 over 100 and the derivative of y would be 1, but don't forget to add a dy dt. So you've got dy dt here. Now at this point, what you want to solve for, you're trying to solve for uh, d theta dt, the rate at which the angle is changing. So the next step would be to take the secant squared from this side and move it to the bottom on this side. So that's what I'll do next. I've got d theta dt would be equal to, and again I'll take this secant squared, move it over to this side, and put it on the bottom. So the secant squared of theta Then I've got 1 over 100 feet, and this is times dy dt. So dy dt. Now we'll scoot this down just a little. Okay, now at this point you want to plug in the things that you know. Well, actually I'm going to make one more change first of all. Uh, I find that Working with 1 over the secant squared is not convenient on a calculator. So 1 over the secant squared is the cosine squared. So I'm going to go ahead and make one last change. It just makes the computation a little bit easier. 
Uh, so d theta dt, 1 over the secant squared, is the same thing as the cosine squared. And the only reason I'm doing this is just because it makes it a little bit easier to calculate. Uh, then I've still got the 1 over 100 feet. And this is times d theta d, or dy dt, the rate at which the rocket is rising. Okay, now at this point, you'd go ahead and plug in the things you know. Now, from the picture and from the information given, I know that dy dt is 50 feet per second. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in right here. Uh, and I think I'll leave this one blank just for a second here. So I'll go to here and leave the cosine squared blank for a second. Then here is the 1 over 100 feet. And I know that dy dt is 50 feet per second. So if I can find what the cosine of theta squared is, put that in there, I'd have everything that I need to know. But now this is another one of those problems where you've got a piece of information that's missing. And the problem is this right here. I need to know what is the angle at the instant in question. So the question wanted to know uh, how high, or how, what is the rate of change of the angle of elevation of the radar when the rocket is 150 feet high? Now we haven't used this piece of information up here yet, 150 feet high, but you need to find out when y is 150 feet, uh, what is the cosine of that angle? Now to find theta at that instant, the only thing that you really have to work with is to go right back up here to the original formula. So I'm going to do a little side calculation again, just like we've done in those previous problems. And this little side calculation is to find theta at the moment in question. So here's what I know. I know that the tangent of theta is y over x. Now at the moment in question, this is y is 150 feet, and x remains constant at 100 feet. So what this gives you is that the tangent of theta, if you divide those two, the units will cancel out, and you get the tangent of theta is equal to 1.5. Now to find out what theta is, that means that theta would be equal to the inverse tangent of 1.5. So what this says is what angle has a tangent of 1.5, if you put that on your calculator, it will return 56.3 degrees. So 56.3 degrees. So at the moment in question, this angle right here is 56.3 degrees. So now I know what the angle is. But what I need, I need the cosine of that angle. So I'm going to take it one step further. I know that theta is equal to this, but I want the cosine of that. So I'll find the cosine of 56.3 degrees. And if I put that in the calculator, it will return 0.5545. 5545. So I went through all that just to find the cosine of theta, and there it is right there. Now again, I think I'm putting this in a little box just to remind me of where things are. So uh, this is my side calculation. So having done the side calculation, now I'll do this. Uh, I've got the cosine squared. I know that the cosine is this value right here. So I'll take this value right here and I'll move it down and plug it in right there. So what I've got the cosine of theta is 0.5 five, four, five. Now remember, that's a pure number, but it remember, it's squared. So it's going to be this thing squared. So now I've got everything that I need. If I put these numbers on the calculator, put this in the calculator, square it. Uh, in this problem, the feet will cancel out. And if I type everything in, I will wind up with this. Um, it will turn out to be point one, three, eight, six, and it'll, now watch the units, it turns out to be 1.1386, nothing per second. 
Well, nothing per second implies radians. So this would actually be radians per second. So that is the rate at which that angle is changing. Now, most people would probably prefer to see that answer in degrees per second. So we'll go ahead and change this to degrees. So to change radians to degrees, remember you multiply it by 180 degrees over pi radians. So 180 over pi, you can change radians to degrees. And if you do that, you'll come out with 7.94 degrees per second. And what that is, that is the rate at which theta was changing. And that's what the question was asking for. So the final answer looks like this right here. Let's just kind of go back through it again. So first of all, draw the picture, set everything up, and you're going to start out initially with the tangent. Um, the 100 feet stays constant through the whole problem, so you can leave it. Now, a couple of little tricks of mine. One of them is to go ahead and take this y right here and move it off to the side. If you do that, it gets you away from the quotient rule. You'll treat that as a constant. Take the derivative of both sides, move the secant squared to the bottom over here. Now, just to make the computation easier, I like to change 1 over the secant squared into the cosine squared. But when I plug in the things that I know, I don't know what the angle is. So for this step, I had to go over right here and do a side calculation. I had to go through all this to find out what theta was. And once I know what theta is, I can take the cosine of that. It gets me a number. Plug that number back in. Finally, I've got everything that I need to complete the uh, computation. And when you do, you get radian nothing per second, which is radians per second. Change that to degrees, and you've got a solution to the problem. So there's a problem that involved the tangent. And it, in this case, uh, you were looking for the rate at which the angle is changing. Now, in later examples, we'll look, if you know the rate at which the angle is changing, find the rate at which the height is changing. We'll try that later.